My test does not test the final version of my feature yet. Should I change the test? Should I add to the test? Or should I write a new one? To answer this question, I want to talk about a concept called triangulation. So how can you determine that your production code does the right thing when it also hides all its implementation, when it encapsulates all its internal state? Well, you can do so by observing the publicly visible behavior of your code by doing indirect measurement and by combining multiple such indirect measurements. And in test-driven development, we call this technique, we call combining multiple indirect measurements triangulation. My name is David and I'm a trainer, coach and consultant with over 12 years of experience and you are now watching part six of an eight-part series about the first two steps of the three-step test-driven development cycle about red and green. So when I teach test-driven development in trainings I often ask attendees to implement the simple hangman game. They decide that the game should know the word to guess and should keep track of the user's progress. And they usually start with a test for the word to guess. They create a new game object, they assign a word to guess, and then they assert that the game has the correct word to guess using a getter or using the word to guess directly. And I tell them, wait, you cannot do that. The game should keep the secret word secret. It cannot just give it back to the caller whenever somebody asks it to give it back. That would not be good design. This violates encapsulation. This does not produce code that adheres to information hiding. And it can lead to more design problems down the road, like feature envy or too closely coupled code. And so they often ask me, how can you write this test without a getter? And the simple answer is, you cannot. You cannot write this test without a getter. So you have to test the functionality that the game knows the secret word differently. But you can make sure that the game knows the secret word by using multiple indirect measurements, by observing the publicly visible behavior through the public API of the code. So you test multiple different features, multiple different publicly visible features. Like in the beginning, the game renders a hint. It renders a placeholder, for example, an underscore for every letter in the secret word. So we can triangulate this functionality by using multiple tests, like it renders a single placeholder for the word A. It renders three placeholders for the word THE. And it renders five placeholders for the word HELLO. Then, after each round, the game shows all the letters that the user already guessed correctly instead of the placeholders. We can triangulate this functionality again, like the game shows an age when the word to guess was hello and the user guessed an age. It shows two L's instead of the placeholders when the word to guess was hello and the user guessed an L. And it shows an age and two L's when the word to guess was hello and the user guessed an age and an L. And when all those six tests are green, then you do not need to test directly that the game knows the secret word. You can be sure that the game knows the secret word because otherwise there would be no way that those six tests are green. So to conclude, you can drive a feature by using multiple indirect tests. And when you do this, you can know that your code implements a certain feature, even if you have no way to test for this feature directly. And in test-driven development, we call this technique triangulation. 
Triangulation allows you to write well-encapsulated code in a test-driven way and to break down this process into small, safe steps. So, how would you have tested for the secret word in this case? How do you break down such a process into small and safe steps? Please tell me in the comments of this video or tell me on Twitter, I am Dtancer there. And if you like this video, please share it with your friends and followers. That would be awesome.